Well, hello and welcome to my presentation on doing the business, the midwife entrepreneur. Um, and my name is Dr. Helen McIntyre and I'm, I am the Associate Professor for Midwifery at the University of Leicester. So I'm going to take you through my five year journey as an entrepreneur. Um, I am a midwife of over 30 years experience, both clinically and within the academic field, and I've worked within a global setting. I do have a passion for holistic care um, and also um, optimising feeding experiences for mothers and babies. And obviously for the majority, that's going to mean breastfeeding. Um, and therefore the World Health Organization and UNICEF baby friendly initiative standards, evidence and um, implementation into clinical practice are really important to me um, with regard to supporting um, feeding with mums and babies. Um, we do know that there have been some challenges in adopting skin to skin between mother and baby and that actually these are both in the immediate post birth period and also um, particularly within the extended field um, and that's something that I think is really important when we're looking at postnatal care we're not just looking at that immediate post birth area. Um, and the new NMC standards for um, midwifery education and generally, which were based on the Mary Renfrew work, um, talk about universal care and then additional care requirements. And obviously that means that universal care is for all of our babies to be receiving it, but then there will be some babies who are going to need a little bit of extra attention. The RCPCH um, in 2016 came out with a report that was really concerned about the readmission rate of normal healthy term babies with weight loss, jaundice, low blood sugars, infections, hypothermia, um, but also then the impact of that in terms of delays and time of GP use, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole field here where actually extended skin to skin time and supporting women to understand their baby's ways of feeding is going to be really, really crucial. Um, and there's a list there of um, potential resources that you may choose to go to for further information. What we do know, and this has been known for a long time now, is that kangaroo mother care has been really, really important in the survival of um, preterm babies in low cost environments. However, we're beginning to understand that actually in term babies, that's really, really important. And actually in environments where money isn't an issue, the, the benefits, the health benefits in terms of um, intellectual development and cognitive development, et cetera, are really, really important. So why, why the development of the Snooby really? Um, it sort of came at an opportune time. I was working at Birmingham City University, um, 2014, 2015, and because it's a post 92 organization or university, then and they have a technical fashion department. And for a long time, I've been thinking about we needed something that we could use within the clinical environment that as midwives, we felt was safe to recommend. And um, because in the past we've used tubi grit, we've used draw sheets, all manner of things to try and support skin to skin in the postnatal time. Um, and um, nothing really has worked particularly well. So anyway, here was an opportunity. So I put a proposal to some third year students um, for their project, and two of the students took up the challenge. Jade Ming's um, design was um, the most adaptable and more in keeping with what I was actually asking for. Um, and you can actually see those behind me at the moment. And Sheila Griffiths was a senior lecturer who was working in the department at the time. Um, and then um, in 2016, we were actually shortlisted um, for um, the West Midlands Improving Health and Creating Wealth. So out of, um, between, out of 70, we came between one and 10. Um, and at a similar sort of time, I was also awarded a student to work with me um, who was going to go on and do it was a full time studentship for PhD. And a little bit pump, of pump priming came with that for me to actually purchase some garments and get them manufactured to a standard that would um, 
would be insurable and was safe enough to use within the trial. So Roe Bailey actually um, undertook the feasibility trial um, and this references for that trial. That's, um, and then she's moved on and completed the rest of the mixed methods um, quals and quant study, which um, is has just been presented for PhD at the moment. What was fascinating about the fe um, feasibility trial was actually that the women connected with their babies more, they spoke with them a lot more, they um, stroked them, they sang to them, the babies spontaneously um, sought the breast. So there was a huge amount of um, really positive work that came out of that just initial feasibility observational study um, on 10 mums and babies. Fascinating. So whenever you're thinking of setting up um, a new product or innovation, um, sort of a few things for you to think about, really. You will need to do some research, particularly if you want it to be coming into the NHS because they're going to want to know it's safe. Um, it will need a patent um, and it will need some sort of trademark because you're likely to give it a name and you want to actually maintain that inter inter intellectual property that is actually yours. Um, whenever you're talking to anybody, think about a non-disclosure agreement. Um, people aren't offended by it. They almost expect it really as a way of demonstrating your seriousness. Um, you will need to create some contracts with manufacturers if it's a manufacturing item. Um, and then you need to think a little bit about whether or not you're wanting it to be set up in your own business. So you're going to become the, the dominant worker within that or whether you want something like a licensing agreement where actually the commercialization of it is transferred to somebody else and you're involved in its development and the research element potentially and the advertising of it but actually you're it's not ta taking over the whole of your life so potentially you're holding down a normal job or the job that you presently have as well as having this alongside or do you actually want the business to become your normal job um, obviously costings need to come into it so your budget the ins and outs um, and then the business plan, you know, where do you expect this to be in one year, five year, 10 years? Um, insurance is going to be crucial just in case a decision that you make or um, a, a meeting that you have with somebody um, turns um, a little bit sour. Um, so you always need to be aware that actually everybody is out to make a bit of a fast book. Um, so just bear that in mind. And is it something that you want to have ongoing involvement in or do you actually want to sell this when it comes to a certain point? And that varies whether it's a startup that you enjoy and you've actually got a whole range of activities that you think could all be startup businesses or whether it's part of a suite of items or actually do you want to see it progress and get bigger and bigger and bigger or actually like is it is it that buzz of creating something that you really like and that's for you to make a decision. What is really, really important is networking. And I would strongly recommend that you apply for the NHS Entrepreneur Programme. And that comes around every year. So that's due to come out now. It's a little bit delayed because of COVID. But what you will be um, entering as part of that is um, a series of lectures, study days, mentor allocation, expert in the field that you're, experts in the field that you're in, and also a, a really safe environment where you can really talk about what you're thinking of doing, how you want to do it, and actually is that going to work in terms of what your plans are. So really, really fundamental, safe place for you to actually discuss those kind of thoughts. So what is important about the Snoopy as an undergarment? So I'm hoping that you have a reasonable understanding of the importance of skin to skin between mum and baby. Um, what is crucial, though, when you're talking to the outside world is the difference between a baby carrier and what we understand within midwifery as skin to skin. 
Um, and they're really very fundamentally different um, and quite challenging when we're talking to the public. So the benefits of skin to skin meaningful relationships and we know that it affects the chemistry in the child's brain and the ox oxytocin that's circulating changes the way in which the brain is developing. So the capacity to problem solve, become self-aware, react under stress, have empathy, kindness, concern and therefore social intelligence comes with that. Eight times more likely to breastfeed after receiving skin to skin. Um, the baby has a more stable temperature, blood sugar, reduced blood pressure um, and reduced stress levels. More regular respiratory rate, the baby cries less, increased appetite and therefore a reduction in these blood sugars. Um, increased pain threshold and enhanced wound healing, immunity, reduced infections and also a healthier baby biome. What is or was surprising in 2018 was the work by um, Cadwell and Brimdeer, where only one in 10 of our babies are actually getting all the elements of the recommended skin to skin at birth. Um, so actually, although we think we're doing really well at it, in reality, there's probably quite a lot of room for improvement. So what is unique about the Snooby? And you have to say it with a bit of a brummy accent, otherwise it's a Snooby. Um, but if you say it with a brummy accent, it comes out as a snooby. And um, so it's worn as an undergarment. And that means, therefore, that you can culturally put your um, external clothing on to, to suit your, your way of wanting to live and be, be viewed. Um, the, this, the predominance of the undergarment is actually made of um, jersey, but the central panel is actually made of um, bamboo, the bamboo fabric. So it's breathable and it's sustainable. And in between that is something called power mesh, which is the thing that is actually going to keep the tensile strength and make sure that your baby is kept safe. The smocking or the ruching on either side is for breast support. Um, and there are three sizes optional. So a small is um, an eight to 10, a medium is 12 to 14, and a large is 16 to 18. At the moment, we've only designed the garments up to a BMI of 30. So the central panel or pouch, again, comes in three sizes. So there's a term one which is designed for um, a 3.5 kilo baby and is safe for that baby to use up to six weeks old. There's the late preterm one, which is for 30 to 36 weeks. And both of those have what I call a fixed panel. And then the early preterm snooby, which is from 24 to 29 weeks, um, which has got um, the, the panel can actually uh, drop down so you can place the baby in with all its tubing and then you basically tie the baby into place. Um, and there's a facility there for stabilising CPAP and also ventilation tubing. Um, so the early preterm one is quite a bit different. Um, there's an adjustable strap that um, for the mum so that um, which will come over the scapula and the clavicle and um, so you're actually using the bone structure of the mother to support the baby's weight um, and that's going to be really important because every woman's torso is slightly different so it's quite important that we're not pulling on the neck as the baby grows um, and um, that we can actually accommodate those changes. I haven't included any clips or Velcros or buckles or buttons, um, partly to protect the baby's fragile skin, but also in resource poor countries, um, those kind of things are liable to perish and to rust. Um, and therefore, you know, you've got an issue there with the, the integrity of the garment. Um, the other big benefit of not having any of those items on is that actually it could be used in theatre um because there are no buckles we don't have any metal so we don't have an issue with diathermy um, within the smocked or ruched, uh, ruched area um there's an inner breast pocket pad um so you can the mothers can actually put in um excuse me breast pads um should they have any problems with leakage and then obviously you just change those as normal and then underneath um, there's a lower support strap that can be placed under the baby's bottom or over the baby's bottom just to stabilise and add a bit of extra support. Um, the plan is once co commercialisation that these garments will be coming in at a price that actually all women can afford 
Um, so it isn't something that um, somebody who has um, plenty of money can actually go and buy, because actually our most vulnerable mums and babies are the ones that need this. So affordable and they are machine washable. So let's just see if we can get this to work. So how is the Snoopy worn? Oh, hello, Hannah, and thank you so much for being willing to um, demonstrate the Snoopy with your baby, Michael. He's absolutely adorable. So as you can see, what we've done is actually um, stripped Michael down to just his nappy. You could take his nappy off if you wish to, um, but that could get a little bit messy, so you might decide to keep his nappy on. And for the purposes of the trial, you would have to take a temperature um, under his armpit before you put Michael into the Snoopy, okay? So you just need to double check that he's well before you okay. put him in the Snoopy, okay? So what we've now done is um, your normal size we've ascertained is um, you're a size 14 in your normal day clothes. Mm -hmm. So the Snoopy that I've picked out for you is a medium, which is okay. sizes 12s and 14s. Um, and your cup size is a C um, and therefore... Um, we, we're okay with that, that medium size. If you were slightly bigger, we'd have, probably have to go to the next size up, but as it is, I mm -hmm. think that'll be absolutely fine. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is put your baby facing you, so tummy to, tummy to your tummy as such, okay. and then where the bamboo bit, where this covering is, okay. you're going to basically tuck Michael into there okay. and then you're going to sort of pull his feet down underneath. OK, but they'll probably work their way down. All right. So I don't know if you want a hand with that or whether you're OK to do that on your own. If you want me to Could lift him up a little bit yeah. for you so you can, you can go tucking down. That's it. So if you can kind of wiggle him down a little bit. That's brilliant. That's lovely. And then we'll just lift that up so that it covers his his neck and the bottom bit of his head. Okay. okay. And then with his feet, as you're doing, can we just have a picture of this, please? So what we're doing is actually splaying the baby's hips out so that they're actually in a really stable position. Okay. And we'll take that back down. And then we can just bring the waistband around. And you can either tuck that over the baby's bottom like that, or if you want to, if it feels more comfortable, tuck him underneath like that so that it kind of lifts him up for you. Um, and if this wasn't a dummy, obviously baby's head would be slightly turned to one side um, so that he could breathe. OK, now how does that feel? Does that feel comfortable? Feels very comfortable. Yeah. OK, so in terms of positions that you could adopt while you're using this newbie, you could either sit upright um, mm -hmm. as you're doing or you could lie semi-recumbent so slightly leaning back um, using um, either cushions or using a bean bag or it could be even be lying on a bed um, or you could lie on your side as long as the baby's head is facing upwards mm -hmm. um, and be comfortable in that position okay in terms of clothing to cover yourself you could either put your cardigan on as this is yours anyway um, and so you actually keep yourself covered other than um, other than obviously where the baby is um, or you could put your dressing gown on or you could put a shirt on that was reasonably light but you'll probably have to keep it open at the front okay um, Okay, so um, hopefully you've got some understanding as to how the Snoopy actually works. Um, so what is really important um, to sort of summarise really is that you really understand your field very, very well um, and that you actually think about the other products that might be on the market um, and that you do a bit of research about that and some really quite honest soul searching as to actually are you finding a niche market or a problem that you are resolving okay rather than thinking oh well yeah i quite like this actually is this going to make is this going to resolve the problem that we've actually got so undertaking service reviews um, are going to be really really important um, and from our point of view that's likely to be done through qualitative and quantitative research um, although you could obviously do some more low-key um, survey analysis as well. 
um, the chances are your first attempt won't be quite right and it's going to be the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth iterations that actually are going to improve and keep improving the, the, the pro final product. Um, so keep searching for that solution. It can be a bit soul destroying at times, but it is important to keep it going. Um, you do have to have a degree of resilience um, because actually not many of the systems um, really support an innovative kind of environment. So that's something that you, um, you kind of have to be aware of. And by its very nature, because you're doing something for the first time, then um, the challenges are inevitable, really. So I think just bear in mind that actually the stumbling blocks that we have will, will improve what we're doing. Um, but also it's really fundamental to the iteration process. Um, and that this isn't about an issue with with you or anybody else. It, it's just the way the thing works. Nobody ever goes from starting to zooming in, in a really quick way. So thank you for listening to me and um, wish you all the very best. And I think there's probably a chat now for you to um, direct any questions to me. Thanks very much and goodbye.